Hello, welcome to For Nip's Sake by me, Naomi's Needles. Um, this is the first of 26 episodes that are based on the alphabet. So it's the A to Z of crafting. Uh, this is the first one, always knitting. And yes, I'm aware that I'm wearing a crochet jumper, <laughs> but the podcast is more than knitting. It's like sewing, crochet, felting, like just basically crafts. I've been knitting since July 2017. Um, I did have a couple of years off, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> uh, I picked up crochet August 2021. I thought a podcast would be the perfect way to share my experiences on knitting, uh, advice, tips, uh, get to know other knitters and crocheters and stuff. Um, so yes, let me know below what, what your craft is and it'd be nice to get to know you. Um, subscribe to see the next one, which is B for books where I'm going to show my entire book collection of crafting, knitting, quilting. I'm actually really excited for that. <laughs> there was a lot of books. I even sorted through them and there's still a lot of books. So yes, I've been knitting since July 2017. My mum taught me. Um, I did want to learn a few years before but I kept putting it off. But I eventually I said, can you teach me please? So she taught me and it took a little while because when you first hold the needles in your hand, it's so strange. It doesn't feel right. But now it doesn't feel right if I'm not knitting. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the first thing I made was like a little tiny snake uh, with the pipe cleaner in so you could bend it. So when I did a dark green square and looking back, mum was like, I should have taught you in a light colour. <laughs> Still picked it up. I uh, dropped a couple of stitches the first time, but then after that I got used to it and then obviously became addicted. I say this podcast episode is called Always Knitting, but in reality it's addicted to knitting. I knit constantly. Um, so, obviously not constantly because you can't knit in the, sh in the shower. <laughs> if you could though. So yeah, uh, knit while watching Teddy, knit while listening to music, knit while listening to podcasts. Um, the only thing I don't knit to is The Crown, Mind Hunter, and Squid Game because some things need like full concentration. And if I'm watching a film in the evening with my boyfriend, I don't knit then because you know the lights are off and it's nice to watch a film with someone else. But when you're by yourself, knitting is like a good companion. Uh, yes, it is. I'm being sarcastic, but it's actually a great companion. Yeah, so uh, most people are like. Knitting makes me feel calm and stress-free and yes it does do that for me but also like I'm addicted and I think kind of in a bad way sometimes. So I'm knitting and I'm constantly thinking what can I knit next and I'm stop doing that project. I know it's very common but for me I feel like I'm constantly starting and restarting projects or giving up on projects. So this year I want to do two projects at the minimum. I have about six work in progresses at the minute, uh, so I'm going to finish them and then after that I'm going to stick to two projects. Um, I reckon the end of year me will look back on this and laugh. <laughs> Another resolution, I don't believe in resolutions but this is like to make me more productive and to feel like I'm wasting less time making things I don't want to make. So one of my resolutions is to knit a tea cosy every month. I mean, when I first got into knitting and before, I was like, I'm going to have a tea cosy collection and I never did. I've got one tea cosy before I learned how to knit and it's a Christmas pudding. So I want to knit one tea cosy a month. Um, and I have the books for it. So I've got a tea cosy book and I've got a pattern with a book cosy in. And then I've got like um, a, pa a book for animal, animal covers for things. So this is the first book, Knitted Animal Cozies. And I'm just going to knit everything in these books. Uh, the first one is this Owl Cozy. So I'm going to knit that one. And then the next one is a Lady Book. So I'm thinking I should have like seasoned ones. So for each month or season or something like that. So obviously I'm going to have a Christmas one, Halloween one, uh, like a spring, summer, and like a winter, like nice blues and things. Uh, this could be a lovely small one actually, couldn't it? And this one's really cute. It's a mouse tea cosy. I don't know why I thought of this. Like I thought of this like yesterday and it's the 2nd of January now. Well, this podcast is released on like the 10th of January, but I'm pre-filming. 
so yeah. There's another one. There's loads in this book. Hedgehog Tea Cozy. The next one is a pattern from Faux Taxidermy by Sincerely Louise, Louise Walker. And this is for an owl tea cozy. So yes, go and knit that too. Uh, it's got three little knitted owls on the top as well. Really cute. And this is a book I've had in my book collection for ages and I never, I've never actually done anything from it or opened it. <laughs> uh, so my mum gave it to me. It's uh, 10 tea cozies. So obviously there's 10 and there's a few, in, there's like four in that other book and one in Sincere Louise. So I can, uh, I've definitely got pick and choose. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to doing this. I've never set myself in it in a lie. Last year I set myself to do the temperature blanket and I made it to like, I knitted January and then I wrote the temperatures down but I would never go and knit it. It just, it was too overwhelming. So I feel like this project is going to be perfect and fun. And I've got a month to make one thing. So that's going to be um, quite manageable, I hope. I might even crochet one as well. So I'll just I'll just go through with you. <laughs> the first one is a pineapple. So again, another perfect summer one. I might end up knitting more than no. Don't say that. I won't. I won't end up knitting more than twelve, will I? Second is a mermaid. Now I'm not too keen on this, so I'm quite glad I've got a few different ones I can choose from. Next up is a striped dress. Now this is black and white and I'm thinking rather than doing the lady on the top, I could do it Beetlejuice for Halloween. Definitely doing that. So I'll knit the lady still, but obviously it's kind of similar to Beetlejuice because it's just it's right. It's just a knitted doll on top, basically. So I just wouldn't. I just yeah, going to do that definitely. So yes, it, it's just a knitted, it's just a knitted doll on top, um, and it's not. It doesn't. I guess it's like you know, it doesn't have like boobs. <laughs> Can I say that? <laughs> it's just a basic doll on top. So I'm not going to Beetlejuice now, and I can just embroider some. I cannot do a little bow, and I cannot do a little flower, and I can um, do like green yarn for the the hair rather than the hat, and I can obviously embroider like bags under his eyes, and I could also like put felt on knit a little tiny tie. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to do that one for Halloween. This next one's really cute. It's a little cottage. So cute. And the next one is, it's quite simple, but it looks really nice. It's just a grey tea cosy with white knitted doves on top. Oh my god, this one's amazing. <laughs> tea and bunting. I think I'm going to make that one first. So cute. And this next one is interesting because it's black. You don't see many black knitted things, do you? Like, in pattern books anyway. Uh, so this is pansies, black and pink flowers, like that's really unique, I've never seen anything like that. And this next one's really cute, it's a vintage rose and it's got, um, inside the roses they've put buttons, it looks really really effective that way, so definitely love that one. Next one is Country Garden, this is really cool right, it's got green for the grass, blue for the sky, and then it's got yellow pom-pom for the sun, like so, so cool. Next, there's a lot of summer ones in this, isn't there? <laughs> because next up is a strawberry. That's very clever as well. On the top it's got a, like a white bit to show like the stem. Obviously that's a teapot. Mine will be orange for my Yorkshire teapot. Um, yes, that's that book. I'm quite glad I've only picked up a random news resolution out of nowhere. Another resolution that I'm going to do in terms of knitting, I haven't done any personal ones, <laughs> just knitting, is, uh, is something that future me might also laugh at. Um, I plan to use my entire stash, my entire pattern collection, not by any yarn, not by any patterns. Um, that 
scares me but I really want to give it a go because I've got so many books and so many patterns in my folder so much yarn like I really don't want to keep buying and buying and just not use anything I want to like be really productive and not wasteful this year so I'm going to do that and obviously with my tea cozies that'll take up a lot of stash the thought of that makes me feel like <sighs> but yeah I'm going to do it I'm going to set my mind to do it so I will do it Please, future Naomi, don't watch this and laugh at me. <laughs> and another one that I want to do is knit clothes. Um, this is crochet, obviously. I was knitting myself a jumper last year, but I gave up because, honestly, I got bored. But that was before I had a lot of patterns to choose from. So I just went off a basic pattern on my phone. I didn't print it off, so it was quite complex to follow. But now I printed off all my patterns. Um, I did that back in November at Mum's house. I used her printer a lot. Uh, so my entire library is printed off. So I'm going to knit some clothes. Definitely. Crochet is good. Like, this jumper is amazing and I love it. Crochet is good and fast. Um, but knitting is my number one. Like I enjoy knitting more than crochet. Like The feeling of it. The needles. I prefer needles on the hook. And knitting feels like classy <laughs> whereas crochet just feels fast and easy and you just like bam 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 make things but knitting is all about taking your time and you know I, w I definitely prefer knitting because until last year I only knit like toys and scarves um, I don't wear hats because obviously massive hair so I started off knitting toys and I only got into knitting like clothes last year which obviously I didn't get into it because I got bored of it <laughs> So in November last year, I went to the Harrogate Knit and Stitching Show and before that, me and Mum looked through patterns and we made a list of uh, yarn we wanted to buy for those patterns. So I'm going to make the Jubilation Cardigan by Paintbox Yarns in this colour. Next to my skin, it looks very washy out, like it's going to wash me out, but I got a green to like contrast it and kind of balance it all out. So it's going to be, obviously there's more than this because that takes quite a lot to make a cloth. To make a cloth, it takes a lot. <laughs> to make a piece of clothing it takes a lot of yarn so yeah I've got this yellow and green let's do the cuffs with the green and then it's got like a ribbing on where the buttons go and the collar so I'm going to do that in green as well I mentioned earlier that it's more addicted to knitting than always knitting like I, I can't just sit and do nothing uh, so sometimes I'll be like I must find an easy project to like go and say as much teddy with but I started this shawl back in November it's the perfect mindless knit and it's gorgeous uh, it's just KFB at the beginning and at the end, and it's just basically going to be a big triangle. This yarn is by Celia McWheely. Uh, it used to be a shop near me, but she moved to Paisley. Um, so yeah, this is a perfect thing to just switch off and watch Teddy with, because sometimes when you're tired, or just in general, you don't always want an intense project, do you? You want something nice and easy. Uh, so yeah, this is that. Um, it was bigger, but I noticed it had a hole in it, like not a drop stitch, just a hole. And I, tried, I knit a row and I kept thinking about the hole, so I pulled it out and started again. And it has like a hundred stitches on, so I, I pulled more because I couldn't get them on, on the needles. But I don't mind because it's lovely yarn to work with and it's nice and soft and the colours are just amazing. And like I said, knitting is about taking your time and enjoying it. And especially with this yarn, like, I tend to knit slower because every single stitch is a different colour. Look how gorgeous that is. And can you see every single stitch is like a different colour as well. So even if it takes me all year to finish, I don't care because I'm enjoying I'm enjoying every moment of it. So sure, I'll pick up every now and then. Um, that's also good because I, if I go places, obviously, I'm not going many places at the minute. Real places, that's a great project to take with me uh, on the train because obviously I was in Harrogate, so I knitted it on the train back. And... Also, I really want to knit clothes this year because I recently learnt the magic loop. So I'm currently knitting some tube socks. I don't know how to turn the heel yet, so I'm just practicing the magic loop and doing tube socks. Um, yes, I'm so happy I've learnt that. Like, it's really funny because an hour before my train, I said to mum, can you teach me the magic loop? And I did. I picked it up in 45 minutes and then on the train back for a bit, I just practiced it. And then obviously I got tired because it's like four or five hours so I just knit my shawl but I did practice a lot and when I came to pick up the magic loop after knitting Christmas presents um, I could. took a few attempts but that's mainly because 
I got sweaty hands. <laughs> When it, when it comes to learning something new, especially with wool, I get sweaty anyway when I'm anxious and then <laughs> my wool and, you know, you, you, you know. You've got to go wash your hands sometimes when you're knitting, haven't you? Especially in summer. First thing I'm going to start is a tea cosy. Not sure which one yet. I'm not going to pick on camera because, you know, you get bored. You're not going to see me flicking through, flicking through. Um, so yeah, and after I've done my tea cosy, I'm going to finish my Curious project. I got the Curious Project, it's a surprise knitting project from Sincerely Louise and I got it as a present off my mum last year so she bought me like all the months so it's like four or five I think. Um, haven't finished a single one. <laughs> but this one I am going to finish, I've started it, I've done the legs, I've done the ear ears, I've done everything, I've just got to do the scarf bit. So I'll show you, it's adorable. Like, how cute is that? It's my favourite colour as well. And like, that was such a lovely surprise. Like, that was just, yeah. And she's even got like blue rosy cheeks. So I can't wait to make that. I definitely need to knit my cheek as fast so I can have this in time for winter. <laughs> that is knit using Stylecraft Recreate and Mohair. Um, it's attached to the work, so I'll just show you. But look how gorgeous that is. so soft and it's knit with five millimeters so it's nice and chunky um knit, i knit a lamp for stephen's christmas present and that was knit in three millimeter needles the socks are 2.75 the shawl is three millimeters so i'm looking forward to going back to like a bit chunkier although it is nice and lovely knitting the small needles but yeah the sometimes it's a bit tight <laughs> So yeah, I'm looking forward to going back to a bit looser knit with like chunkier needles and they sound different. It's just nice knitting with chunky after knitting with small ones for so long and vice versa. So if I'm knitting on chunky for quite a long time, so like 9mm, 10mm, even 5 when I go back to do even 4mm or 3 I'm like, oh, it's really nice knitting on small compared to chunky. So it just depends how often you're knitting in certain needles for, like how often you want to change your needle size. You know what, I'm going to put my tea codes that I'm going to make on here. All right, I, I did say this the first time, didn't I? I think it's got to be the pea and bunting. And then I'm going to find myself some, like, Battenberg and have a little tea party. <laughs> yeah, go and knit this one first. Definitely do that one first. I just love, like, what is that? Why is it so big? <laughs> <laughs> really detailed, like, obviously that's a cake stand. It's really detailed. Don't, uh, should I, can I fold the page over? I'm folding the page, no I'm not folding the page over. I'm just going to put it down and get a sticky note for it later. The other thing I want to knit this year is something with all my Advent yarn. Um, I bought it thinking I'm going to make a shawl but I, I still seem to be getting confused with yarn over. I have a pattern for a chevron stitch by Hedgehog Fibres. That's a shawl. Um, that again is another project where I have to sit and concentrate. But like I said, knitting is about taking your time, so I think I'm going to do that. Um, yeah, I did try a few times, but that was before I did like a good cast on. I just cast on normally, and the first row is really hard, especially when there's that many stitches. So now, in every project I do, I start to do a long tail cast on because it's like a first row and it's just a lot easier to knit into. I, I discovered that when I was doing the magic loop. The loop, you got the yarn, it's all quite messy and that makes it harder to knit into because it's just all over. So that's when I thought I'm going to do a long tail cast on. Um, yeah, <laughs> I was thinking then all sorts need long tail cast on. I must have done it wrong the first time, just do a normal cast on. Once I did that, I was able to do the magic loop fine, like, it just made a massive difference. Another thing with the magic loop is, right, you know we've got to split the stitches into the half. So, um, at be rather than counting when you've cast all the stitches on, I put a stitch marker halfway in between, and then when you come to pull it through the needles, you know how, you know where to, where to pull, and you don't have to count every single stitch, because if you've got a lot of stitches, like a hundred, or like, even if you've got like ten, it's just better, nice to do. It saves time, and that's my way of doing it anyway. I uh, hope that's helpful. Socks I'm knitting are 
West Yorkshire Spinners, the Robin. They've got a, a bird collection of yarn, so all their yarns inspired by birds. And I thought Robin was like a perfect autumn, winter type sock. Type sock. <laughs> I thought Robin was a perfect, like, wintry autumn sock to do. Um, I say that, but obviously if you knit socks, you're going to wear them all the time, aren't you? Not just, like, in seasons. But if I do knit enough socks, I'll have enough to wear for seasons. So this is the Robin. It's also a lovely Christmas sock. I'm, I've seen West Yorkshire Spinners knitted up, like in other colours, and it's, it's gorgeous. So I'm really excited to knit with this. But it's just basic, but it's the West Yorkshire Spinners, so I'm using the same yarn for the socks, just because it's my first pair and I want to do it properly. I can't, um, I can't leave my magic loop, um, like finished. I have to like do it mid row, then I know where I am uh, to start. So hopefully that will come with time. So, and also I mark off every half needle. So after I've knit a row and I pull the needle through, I put a little dot. And then when I finish that row, I put the number I'm on. And that's just me personally. I can't count rows anyway. I find it really hard, so I just leave it as it is. <laughs> and these aren't seasonal socks, but for my advent calendar, I made it myself. Because in August I saw a yarn advent and it had sold out, so I just assumed that meant every single yarn advent had gone. <laughs> so I made my own, and then the wool arrived like late August, and then that's when everyone started to like say, I've got a yarn advent, and I was like, oh. But it was fun making my own. I was surprised at the colours because um, I've got bad memory, so I was like surprised every day still. So that was good. Um, my last day was Christmas Eve, and because I made it myself, I was able to get a 200 gram skein. Sky, Hank. Um, it's gorgeous. It came in tissue paper as well, so I can't. This is the one I did forget what colour it was because I, in my head, it was like purple, black, grey. But in reality, it's like quite a light purple, and it's just lovely. It's got oranges and pinks, it's got so many grey, blue, it's just lovely. How gorgeous is that? And that is by My Yarn Place. I'll pop a link below for you. It's really well priced wool as well, it's like because some skeins are very, very expensive. Uh, this was decent. So with this, I keep thinking I want to knit a, it's like a vintage headband I found, like the pattern and it's got, it, it tapers off at the end and it's quite long and it's knit in the round so there's no wrong side. I think that's a good project because I want to keep practicing magic loop um, so eventually I can pick it up and know where I am. And it's a really cute headband as well but at the same time I'm like, that's a lot of yarn, 200 grams. Is it a way to make a headband or should I make like a, a, a vest with it or something? Headband is in my head, so I probably will make that. Um, and now my hair's growing as well, it'd be nice to have like a little cute hairband on it. And then these aren't theme socks, but also in my advent I got a the colours based off the Village Women sash. So I'm going to knit socks with that, like that was the idea even before I could do Magic Loop. But now I can. So I'm going to do, I still think tube socks. I think I would like to go to a lesson on how to turn the heel. I do have a tiny pattern for like mini socks and that's like turn the heel. So it'd be good to practice on small socks to turn the heel, then you're not wasting a lot of time and yarn. Um, yeah, that was at the Harrogate Knit and the Stitching Show and I was, the guy had them all hung up. And I was like, they're so cute. And because they're, they're proper socks, but they're like tiny. And they weren't like Christmas colors, they were all knit in different colors. So he was like, here you go. He just gave me the pattern. So yes, I think I might practice that because it would be cute to have 24 little socks for next year. This is the Votes for Women uh, socks, sock yarn. Um, as you can see, it's just gorgeous. It's quite hard to show all, all of them because it's blue and a bit wobbly. But you can see how it's inspired by the sash, can't you? Like the, the minty green and the purples. Such detail as well, like that is going to be gorgeous knitted up. So I think once I finish my robin, I'm going to start them. Also, if any knitters are watching, is it worth getting a, a spinner to make cakes? Like cake to make cakes. <laughs> Non-knitters are like, what? Is it worth it to get a um, 
a winder and a, a cake thing to make balls of wool because I keep winding it up by hand. And if I had a spinner, I would probably would have unwound this by now. But the thought of unwinding a 200 gram skein thing, Hank. Ah, what if, I, what if it goes wrong? I'm just scared, it's so lovely. So is it worth getting a, I, I forget the word, but you know what I mean. Um, is it worth getting a spinner thing? Um, I know you can't do 200 grams on them, so I will have to do this by hand. So I think I've just got to do it and it will all be okay. It's so soft. It's just decay, but it's just, it's lovely. I think that's everything for the first podcast episode, Always Knitting. Addicted to knitting, let's be honest. Let's be honest. <laughs> if you like this video, please like and subscribe to see the next one, which is books. There's a lot of books. I've got like, I've got like a, there's like a four shelf. I've got a shelf with four shelves. How do you say how many shelves on a shelf? I've got a shelf with four shelves on it and there's books on two of them. There's knitting, sewing, quilting, crochet, pom-pom, like general craft. There's a lot of books, so that is going to be really, really fun. So please subscribe to see that. And obviously it'll inspire you to get the books or get ideas on future plans. It's, yeah, so please subscribe to see that. And I'm really excited to do that. It's also quite daunting, isn't it? Like, <laughs> no, it'll be okay. It'll be okay because I have my resolution of not buying any patterns because I've just got so many patterns, so many books, and it just feels like I'm collecting without using, which is so pointless. So yes, this year, no buying yarn, no buying patterns. Uh, do you have any news resolutions, be it knitting, crafting, crochet, or just like normal life ones? Uh, let me know. And let me know if you knit, crochet, sew, what your craft is, what you're wanting to make this year, your favourite make from last year. Um, do you have any strange collections that you've made? Like, obviously I'm doing my tea cosy, so that's going to be a little quirky collection. Um, and it will make me drink out of my teapot more. So it's all good, isn't it? So yeah, uh, subscribe to see the next one, which will be next Monday. It's books. And after that, it is confidence. So this is confidence when it comes to making your own clothes, giving presents that you've made, um, just confidence in general, like walking on the street knowing that you've made something that you're wearing. Because let's be honest, when you make things like, like clothing, you do feel like a little bit special compared to just buying something. Um, so yes, that was going to be a good one. And the confidence when you give presents to people, Presents? Presents when you give things to, presents when you give presents. The confidence when you give presents to people and yeah, it's just it's just kind of, I guess it's kind of about how crafting can change your life. I know like I'm addicted to knitting, which isn't always good, but overall crafting and everything has changed my life for the better. Um it seems so strange now that I used to not knit. Like what did I do? Just sit and watch telly. It's funny because my mum grew up knitting, like her granny taught her when she was tiny. She knit like a teddy with a cardigan and everything. Impressive. But yeah, she was knitting when I was growing up, knitting when I was at home before leaving for uni. And she always said, do you want to learn to knit? I was like, nope, because I was popping into art then, so my art was my thing. And after uni, I kind of, the art kind of fizzled, fizzled. So I, I was just sitting watching telly and not doing anything. Which is okay, but for me, looking back, I wish I'd learnt in it sooner. And obviously I had the two years off, don't know why, just kind of happened. Um, but I came to pick, pick up knitting again and I was okay. But I will never have a break ever again. <laughs> I even knit when I was in hospital for two and a half weeks. Uh, I never throw anything away because it just had bad memories and it wasn't that great. Because I'm morphine. <laughs> but yeah, like knitting in hospital, like that is addicted to knitting there, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. It would be lovely to get to know you, so just comment below, like, hello or anything. And I will see you next week for books. Also, how many books do you have? <laughs> we can all be honest here because I'm going to come and share my massive collection. So yes, thank you for watching and I will see you next week. Okay.
Bye.